incurable autoimmune diseases are surprisingly very curable. I am Dr. Ali and I am the Head Transformation Specialist at the Peptide Science Institute bringing you another one of our case studies. And today's case study is about reversing a very atypical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Little bit about the client, so we're gonna call her Gail, and she's a 43-year-old former competitive athlete who came to us with debilitating rheumatoid arthritis that had begun ravaging her body in her mid-30s. Before her diagnosis, Gail had been a vibrant, energetic woman who thrived on physical challenges and outdoor activities. Her identity was deeply tied to her athletic abilities and active lifestyle. By the time she'd reached out to us, Gail was a shadow of her former self. Her once toned physique had become soft and weakened from years of inactivity. Dark circles under her eyes revealed her chronic fatigue and poor sleep quality. Even speaking for extended periods left her winded and exhausted. Moving on to her problem section, and you'll see a lot of them because Gail's rheumatoid arthritis was more severe than most I've ever seen. So number one, severe rheumatoid arthritis that had begun at age 28, leaving her joints swollen, painful, and increasingly deformed. Number two, recently diagnosed interstitial lung disease directly caused by her rheumatoid arthritis, causing frightening episodes of shortness of breath even during mild physical activity. And yeah, her interstitial lung disease would manifest as acute episodes of breathlessness and tachypnea and tachycardia. Not very fun. Number three, chronic fatigue, which her doctors attributed to immunosuppressants. Basically, that's a huge mistake, dare I say an idiotic mistake, because people with rheumatoid arthritis are over two times more likely to develop some form of hypothyroidism. So that's what was causing that. Number four, newly developed oral candidiasis from her inhaled corticosteroids, making eating painful and a lot of other symptoms. Number five, a medical team that only offered adding a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug or increasing her prednisone dose, risking further destruction to her quality of life. Now, she was on an additional uh, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug, which did help her for a short period of time, and not a lot, but it did help. It's called uh, baricitinib. It's a Janus kinase inhibitor. And, of course, her insurance company just stops covering it. And number six, irregular menstrual cycles, which was also caused by her uh, general pathological autoimmune state. Now, she's 43, so she just ignored it as, you know, part of aging, but we got her covered. And the last straw was reached when her insurance company rejected the baricitinib, and then her doctors told her, let's raise the corticosteroid dose, prednisone dose specifically, add an inhaled corticosteroid, and she did follow the advice, just didn't see that much improvement. So she sought out the alternative, innovative approach with the Peptide Science Institute. Number one, precision cell augmentation. In her case, that included a blood panel, getting key biomarkers that her doctors had ignored revealing uh, previously undiagnosed Hashimoto's thyroiditis with the signature elevated anti-TPO antibodies, a high TSH of 6.4 microliters per milliliter in her case, and a low free T4 of 0.7 nanograms per deciliter. Number two was a comprehensive cytokine profile to identify specific inflammatory pathways driving her autoimmune conditions and proxies of neuroinflammation. Number three, targeted peptide protocol aimed at optimizing her immune system regulation and repro reprogramming her immune system, really, joint tissue regeneration, as well as lung, heart, and brain health. And if you've watched our case study on uh, reversing uh, uh, congestive heart failure, you'll see the relationship between the lungs and the heart, and, well, both of them will nourish the brain and provide it with oxygen. Number four, complete overhaul of her diet to eliminate inflammatory triggers and provide optimal cellular nutrition. Number five, controlling for deficiencies that are either caused by her condition or could worsen them. So an example of that would be specifically in people with rheumatoid arthritis on disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. Vitamin D seems to, to have a tendency to get low, and supplementing it really helps them, uh, symptomatically speaking. Number six, carefully monitor tapering of her immunosuppressive treatments to avoid dangerous rebound effects. So yeah, we had to do that gradually. You can't just do it immediately, take her off immunosuppressants when she's been on them for years because that'll cause a rebound effect that's really worse than the disease itself, but yeah. And number seven, progressive reintroduction of appropriate exercise to rebuild strength without triggering flares. Throughout the process, we conducted regular epigenetic testing, body composition analysis, and biomarker assessment to continuously fine-tune her protocol for maximum effectiveness. And onto the results section, which demonstrates the uh, most significant uh, biomarkers and health proxies how they were before the transformation and how they are after. Before our intervention, Gill's health metrics revealed a body in crisis. Number one, a VO2 max of 27, so that's poor cardiovascular fitness, bottom 10% for her age. Shocking for a woman that used to be an athlete, really. Number two, erythrocyte sedimentation rate of 24 millimeters per hour, increased protein count in the blood. Uh, this is a test that 
really is underdone nowadays. I don't see it done much for some reason in the, in the clients that we do get. And really, I would suggest getting it anyway. If you're getting a blood work, better to get erythrocyte sedimentation rate with the complete blood count. Her high sensitivity C-reactive protein was six milligrams per deciliter, so indicating severe inflammation. TSH of 6.4 microunits per liter. Hypothyroidism, her uh, thyroid is not responding to the T uh, TSH released by her anterior pituitary. Her free T4 was only 0.7 nanograms per deciliter, which is below the normal range. Sleep quality was terrible, uh, averaging in the 40s measured by Apple Watch. And it's no surprise with all the chronic pain and the immunosuppressants and so on. And number seven was the proxy for how we recovered her reproductive health and hormonal health, really. LH to FSH ratio is the first test I would take in someone with her condition specifically, because this ratio could be two to one, three to one sometimes in women with what's called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that condition is closely linked with rheumatoid arthritis. There is an association between them. Seeing that ratio at 1.8 to one gave me confidence that I can reverse uh, her uh, reproductive health dysfunction without really needing to test estradiol or progesterone in specific uh, phases, so in her luteal phase or follicular phase and so on, because the numbers can really vary a lot. And now on to how these same health proxies and biomarkers look like after three months of our transformation protocol. And her results were indeed outstanding. Number one, VO2 max up from 27 to 39, indicating good cardiovascular performance and putting her in the top 35% of her age group. Her SED rate went down to six after being 24. That's an indication of reduced antibody production, massively reduced antibody production. Number three is her high sensitivity C-reactive protein going down from six to undetectable pretty much. It's less than one milligrams per deciliter. Her TSH is down from 6.4 to 1.6, indicating that her hypothyroidism has been resolved, further confirmed by her free T4 of 1.5 nanograms per deciliter. Sleep quality, another area of massive improvement. So she was getting scores consistently in the 40s on her Apple Watch and started getting scores consistently in the 80s. That's massive sleep uh, quality improvement. And good sleep quality is actually inversely associated with autoimmune disease prevalence. Number seven, LH and FSH ratio down to one to one after it was 1.8 to one. What that really tells me is that she was in the beginning stages of developing polycystic ovarian syndrome, but thank God we caught it in time. And finally, I'll read you some of her uh, qualitative reports to us on this transformation and really testimonials, how she's felt her subjective experience and so on. I had this moment during my workout yesterday that I'll never forget. I was halfway through my circuit training when it hit me. I was moving like my old self again. I literally had to stop and just sobbed for a good 10 minutes. It wasn't sadness. It was this overwhelming realization that I had gotten my life back. The brain fog lifting has been almost as dramatic as the pain disappearing. My memory is sharper than it's been in decades. I can't get over how clearly I can breathe now. The first morning I woke up and took that deep, full breath without any tightness or pain was incredible. My husband told me last night that seeing me laugh without wincing afterward is something he'd forgotten was possible. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe. They massively help the algorithm. Thank you for watching. This was Dr. Ali, the head transformation specialist at the Peptide Science Institute. Goodbye.